Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In recent memory, I can't think of a more anticipated set of launches over the Lovelace architecture from NVIDIA and RDNA 3 from AMD. It perhaps even dwarfs Zen 4 and Intel's Raptor Lake. In this video, then, we're going to focus on Narve 3X's release date, plus several other key details, not least of which some early information concerning the die sizes and also some updates to the duo cards. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video sponsor. And if you want to support the channel, and of course, if you're building a new PC anyway, then you may want to buy yourself a cheap Windows CD key. So, yeah, let's get into it. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So starting things out with the release date, October or November, at least according to Grayman55 on Twitter. Now this is really close to the launch dates that I've touted on the channel for some time now. Basically, what's what I've heard anyway is that Navi 31 would be the SKU which launches first, and then perhaps late this year, somewhere around November, we would possibly see Narve 33 or even early next year. And then after that, we will see Narve 32. Now this makes sense because obviously AMD will want to launch its flagship first to basically gobble up as many sales as possible and put out a competitive product against Nvidia. Furthermore, Narve 33 is roughly on par with the RX 6900 XT and so on. It's possibly gonna be a little bit faster in lower resolutions, about the same at 1440p, maybe a little slower at 4K or about on par. Um, but obviously ray tracing performance N33 is going to be considerably faster. We've discussed the specs a ton of times on the channel before, but this is basically what I'm expecting them to be. I do believe a single GCD is most likely at the moment, especially when we factor in a ton of other things that I've been told. Basically, um, I've had two stories explained why there's a single GCD. The first is that it was always intended from the very beginning to be a single GCD. The second theory that I've heard or explanation, depending how you want to you know, consider this, is that two GCDs were considered, but basically for gaming anyway, AMD just couldn't get them singing on the same hymn sheet, so to speak. Uh, essentially there were just issues and they couldn't get them sorted out in time for Narve 3 X's launch and instead it's going to be Narve 4 X. Now I'm not 100% on that um, to be honest whether we're going to see it for Narve 4 X. I mean it's very possible and that's what I've been told that uh, Narve 4 X is going to be multiple GCDs but honestly it's very difficult to know. What I will add to this of course is that AMD have kind of hinted that we're going to be seeing advanced packaging, you know next generation infinity cache and so on. So this does almost certainly, uh, well it certainly doesn't confirm the you know GCD and MCD design but it very much hints it. Now I will also add a couple of other little uh, tidbits into this video because quite honestly, I think it's just a good place for them. The first is remember the official slide from AMD. It's 50% plus performance per watt over RDNA 2. Now, what I was basically told is that this is Narve 3 free, um, because obviously that's being, well, not obviously, but the rumor is it's being produced on the 6NM process, whereas um, Narve 31 and 32, the GCDs, are being produced on the 5NM process. So to my understanding, anyway, what I was told by a single source is that Narve 31 and 32 are going to be around 60 to 70% improvement um, when it comes to performance per watt, and Narve 33 is going to be 50%. Now, in terms of the die size, and to be clear here, I do mean the GCD, I do not mean the entire package. 
um, including the uh, MCDs. But G the GCD, I'm told, is between 350 to 400 mm squared. It seems to be on the larger side, 380 to 400 ish mm. However, I have had one source tell me it's 350, I think it was like 355 or 360, I don't remember offhand, but let's just say 350. But most have told me it's 380 to around 400, which is pretty large. But you've got to remember, of course, that we haven't exactly seen like a block diagram of this thing. We haven't seen um, you know, full in-depth analysis as to what AMD have changed. We've got a pretty good idea. Uh, we do believe that, of course, N31 has six shader engines, and again, we've gone through the specs multiple times previously, so I don't want to go too much into depth with this, because I've uh, discussed it so many times in videos, and again, you can see the specs on the screen yourself. But another thing I do want to just quickly go over are the dual um, GCD rumors when it comes to the Pro cards. Now, I have been told that AMD are working on Pro Duo cards, and as the name would imply, these are two GCDs, but they do seem to be only designed around gaming when it comes to the two GCD design. I will add that uh, it's quite interesting from the perspective that they've essentially lost Apple as a customer, at least unless there's like some surprise announcement, which I'm not exactly, you know, expecting. Um, but of course, AMD have made several big advancements recently. You've probably seen some of the benchmarks in terms of OpenCL performance, DirectX 11 and other things. So obviously AMD working towards cards which are really good quote-unquote, at compute isn't exactly surprising. Perhaps adding a little fuel to the fire as well is that in the drivers, there have been references of a Nave 3 x GPU which has eight shader engines. Um, and this is obviously more than N31, which allegedly has six. To my personal understanding so far then, we're looking at a dual a GCD design which has around 16,000 shaders total. I'm obviously rounding up here. And this is compared to N31, which contains around 12,000 shaders. So this is going to be a really interesting product if AMD launch it at the end of the day. A, my information could be incorrect. And B, and this is a big one, AMD's plans can change. And there does seem to be a lot of fluctuation, not only from AMD, but NVIDIA and Intel. Not only because they are trying to catch a lot of leakers at the moment, but there's also another big thing, and that is that market conditions are just changing on a dime. And remember, AMD are not just competing against Intel and NVIDIA. There is so much competition at the market at the moment. Everyone wants a piece of the pie. Even, of course, Apple are being ultra aggressive with its own silicon. And while naturally they are not necessarily all competing in the same product market, they are still competing with one another. And it's going to be very interesting, to be honest with you, to see the state of the, the launch. Because, quite frankly, um, you know, NVIDIA, from what we understand anyway, did hold back the launch of the RTX 40 series. I've been told that, you know, and others are reporting as well, that it was due to oversupply of the RTX 30 inventory. But while I do somewhat buy this, I also do... I do somewhat suspect that it could as well be the fact that they don't want to just necessarily launch their products first they they may be wanted to see what amd are doing but who knows like these companies they have a lot of long-term roadmaps and quite frankly everything is just in flux at the moment it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in terms of pricing as well um for n31 going back to the die size um, from my understanding, it seems that AMD's N31 products are not massively more expensive to produce than N21. I've had a couple of sources tell me it's around 20 to 30% additional production cost. But naturally, things are just so crazy at the moment. We don't really know, I, well, I don't know it anyway, whether those production cost estimates were before TSMC and everyone else started to hike up their prices. At the moment, things are just so nuts in the world. Who knows what the final cost of these uh, GPUs could be? Um, and yeah, it's it's going to be a really interesting state of affairs, I imagine, over the next couple of months. I cannot wait to actually start seeing like really concrete leaked benchmarks um, and actually see what AMD have done under the hood because to me that's kind of the interesting thing of these products. Zen 4 is a really cool uh, processor, don't get me wrong, I'm really looking forward to it, but the fact is, like, it doesn't do anything that's 
you know, totally different to Zen 3. It is basically Zen 3 and just improves it in every way. Massive increases to clock frequency, obviously some IPC gains, AVX 512, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, IO as well just goes up to a stratosphere. However, the core itself isn't fundamentally different you know it's it's dna has just evolved a little it's not totally different and that's perhaps why i'm even more excited for zen 5 um and i suspect that it's going to be kind of the same for intel's raptor lake like raptor lake is cool it has additional cores and all the other stuff we've discussed but you know 13th generation compared to 12th generation it's it's nice but 14th generation onwards from intel where things get really funky so it's going to be really cool, I think, over the next couple of years to see how all of this tech plays out. With that said, though, I think that's just about it for this particular video. If you've enjoyed it, well, you know what to do. It's YouTube. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.